EVs are stupid. Why would I want to spend sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars on a brand new EV? Just have to buy another battery in five years for another twenty thousand dollars. Of all the EV criticisms, this is probably the most scary and the most wrong. So I guess we got to talk about it right now. Sound the alarm. I'm coming, I'm coming up. We'll have the ball. I'm sweet like Hi, this is Rich, and welcome to Wings, Wheels, and Wires, and welcome to video two in our series, Do EVs Suck? We look at the truth and misinformation behind common EV criticisms. And today's topic is going to be quite a ride, so buckle up, boys and girls. When it comes to EV batteries, let's start with two absolute truths. One is that they will absolutely wear out. And two is that they are expensive to replace. So let's start with the first point. Gas engines can fail, but if there are no manufacturer defects and they're treated well, gas engines can easily last two to 300,000 miles before having catastrophic failure. The same cannot be said for EV batteries. While they won't necessarily have a rapid failure like you have with gas engines, they do degrade slowly over time. And while there are things you can do to slow the process of degradation, there is absolutely nothing you can do to prevent it. For the second point, replacing EV batteries is expensive. According to GreenCars.com, replacing a Chevy Bolt battery will cost about $16,000 to replace the battery in a Tesla would start at $20,000 on up through their models. And the cost to replace the battery in my BMW i3 would be about $13,500. So as you can see, replacing a battery can be very expensive. The replacing your battery every five years part of this criticism, however, is absolutely wrong. You see, most cars have a four to five year bumper to bumper warranty depending upon the make and model. The Battery and drivetrain in EVs is typically warranted up to 8 years and 100,000 miles. So if your battery happens to fail within that time, that that's very expensive battery cost is the manufacturer's problem, not yours. And some vehicles have an even longer warranty. In states that follow the CARB guidelines, my BMW i3 Rex version actually has a 10 year and 150,000 mile warranty. But no doubt you're asking, but what if my battery is damaged as part of an accident? Well, assuming you have insurance coverage, your battery will be covered under your insurance. So in summary, for the first eight years of an insured EV's life, there is no chance that the owner will have to come out of pocket for a battery replacement. But what about after eight years? Well, in order to describe this, first we have to truly understand what degradation is. Degradation is the slow loss of battery capacity over time measured by percentage. Usually your biggest loss of your percentage is in the first one to two years and then it slows down significantly for the remainder of the battery's life. EV makers warranty that you will still have at least 70% of your battery capacity when you reach the 8 year or 100,000 mile mark. As a public service note, if your EV is nearing the end of its warranty period, it would be in your best interest to take it to the manufacturer slant dealer to have them measure your remaining percentage so that they can remedy it before it becomes your problem. Why it's important to understand what degradation is is because it doesn't actually impact any of the aspects of how the car drives, just how far it will go per charge. Also, Bigger batteries will actually go through fewer cycles for the same number of miles, so the degradation will be lower. And you'll also still have more miles left after the degradation has occurred. If you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button down below. While you're down there, hitting the subscribe button would greatly support the channel. And, of course, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And stand by to the end of the video to hear my new subscriber shoutouts. So, exactly how fast does EV battery degradation occur? Well, this varies by a couple factors. The model of the vehicle, the mileage, where it's located, and how it's treated. The reason why the model is important is different EV manufacturers have different qualities of thermal battery management systems. You see, heat is the worst enemy of an EV battery. 
Take, for example, the Nissan LEAF, which is the worst thermal management system because they use a passive air cooling system as opposed to an active liquid cooling system that's in almost every other EV. Mileage is a simple concept. The more miles you put on the vehicle, the more cycles you go through and the more degradation. Location is very important because hotter climates are going to be rougher on EV batteries. And how the battery was treated is the only one in here that you actually have some control over. You see, vehicles that are kept between 20 and 80 percent and almost always level 2 charged or level 1 charged will have less degradation than a vehicle that is frequently or constantly charged via DC fast charging, especially if it's all the way up to 100 percent. So let's illustrate the difference. And at five years and 80,000 miles, a 300 mile range Tesla that's in San Francisco using only level two charging and is kept between 20 and 80% may only have as little as 5% degradation. On the flip side, a 2012 100 mile range Nissan Leaf in Yuma, Arizona that is only charged via DC fast charging could easily have as much as 20% degradation. Now that said, the difference that DC fast charging makes over level two is a little unclear because earlier studies showed that DC fast charging created a significant amount of additional degradation. However, newer studies are starting to show that the difference between level two charging and DC fast charging is actually pretty minimal as far as degradation. So back to the question of what happens after your warranty period. Well, your warranty states that you should still have at least 70% after the warranty period, but you could actually go well below that percentage depending upon how many miles you're okay with driving. As an example, a 300 mile EV that has 40% degradation still has 60% capacity left, which is still over 180 miles, which is not great, but for many people would still be able to meet their needs and it would actually take a very, very long time to get down to that, that level of degradation. Sooner or later though, the degradation is going to get severe enough that you are going to have to do something about it. The good news is you don't have to pay the really outrageous prices that green cars quoted. You see, those are the prices for a full replacement of a brand new battery. But in many occurrences, you may be able to replace pieces of the battery rather than the entire thing. You see, an EV battery is not a single entity like the 12 volt battery in your gas car. EV batteries are broken down into modules and each of these modules are also broken down into several cells. And their degradation will not be the same. For example, you may have one cell that's still at 80% capacity while another cell may only be 40. The problem you have is that to protect the entire pack, the battery management system tries to balance the load across all the cells. So that 40% cell will drag down the entire system. And replacing the bad cells can improve the performance of the entire battery at a fraction of the cost. Let's take a look at my BMW i3. My battery pack is broken down into eight modules. So if all the bad cells were in one module, I could replace just that module for one eighth of the price of replacing the entire battery. And you can take this repair process even further. Each of the modules in my i3 has 16 pouch packs. So if you had to replace just a single pouch, you would do so at one 128th of the price of buying an entirely new battery. So let's break that down. The cost of a brand new BMW i3 battery is $13,500. One 128th of that cost is a mere $105 per cell that you need to replace. Now, breaking the battery down to this level will incur additional labor costs, but as you can guess, they're going to be a whole lot less expensive than replacing the entire battery. This breakdown can get even crazier when you look at vehicles that have cylindrical batteries. The Tesla Model S P85 utilizes 2170 cells, which basically look like large AA batteries. And it has 7104 of these batteries in the vehicle. So 
You prorate out the $20,000 divided by 7,104, and this gives you a cost of $2.81 per cell. So let's say you have 500 of these batteries that have degraded enough to break down the system. You can replace these for a cost of about $1,400, and this will restore your system to a pretty usable level. And again, these prices are all based on new batteries. You can get used batteries that are still in very good shape for significantly less money. A two minute search on eBay and I found this never installed BMW i3 battery for only $8,000. And a simple search can also find uh, individual modules that are about $500 each. So you can replace all of the modules in your battery for only $4,000. And there are prices all the way down to $250 each, which which would mean only $2,000 to replace your entire battery. So let's say I actually replace my entire EV battery and it's out of warranty. So I replace it with this $8,000 battery and let's say it cost me an additional $2,000 to install it. I wasn't able to find any place that gave a concrete price on this. If you know the price or you have some experience with that, go ahead and put that down below for me. Now that's $10,000 total to replace this battery with a brand new one. Now, that means I'm out $10,000, right? Well, no, not actually, because see, my used battery is still worth money, because while below 70% may not be good enough for vehicle usage, it's still perfectly fine for static energy storage. You see, the problem with EV batteries is as they degrade, you are spending energy to carry around cells that aren't worth carrying around. This is very inefficient, but you see static energy storage doesn't care. It doesn't care about the bulk of the battery. It doesn't care about the weight of the battery. It just cares about having something to put energy in and take it out of. So let's say I'm able to sell my used i3 battery to a static energy company for $3,000. This brings my total installed price down to $7,000. Now, this is still a fair amount of money. And if it seems like it's still too much, now I want you to turn around and take a look at how much it costs to replace a gas car engine. The price is anywhere from $5,000 up to and even beyond $20,000 before the installation cost. Now, it is important to note that all of the prices I've quoted are for battery prices today. A vehicle purchased today may not need a battery replacement for 20 years or maybe even 30. And at that point, you can expect bat the replacement batteries to be much cheaper. And as a note, they'll also probably be better made, which means that the replacement batteries may last 40, 50 years after that. So thanks for watching this far. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give me a thumbs up and hit that bell notification and the subscribe button would really support the channel and get, like, key you into future videos. Also, hang out for my subscriber shout out. And here's a video YouTube thinks you're going to like. Have a great day. And now it's time for the subscriber shout outs. If you'd like your own shout out, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and either make sure your name is visible or put in the comments down below that you subscribed. PSN Tuning Delirium. Mark Train. And Luis.